Ostende nobis Domine misericordiam tu ham. Domine exalti ratione meham. Exaldinos, Domine Sante Pater Omnipotens Eterne Deus, et mitere dinere Sanctum Angelum Tuum de Celis, qui custodiat foveat, protegat visitet atque defendat, omnes habitantes in hoc habitaculo. Per Christum Dominum Nostrum.
Semper Virgine Dei, Genetrice Maria, cum Beato Iosef, Beatis Apostolis Tuis, Petro et Paolo, atque Beato Roberto, et omnibus Sancti, salutem nobis tribue benignus et pacem, ut destructis adversitatibus et erroribus universis, ecclesia tua, secoda tibi servi ad libertate. Periundum Dominum Nostrum Iesum Christum Filium Tuvum, we take and vive that reignat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lectio Epistule Beati Pali Apostoli, 
Adalatas, fratres, si spiritu vivimus, spiritu et ambulemus, non eficiamor in anis gloriae cupidi, in vincem provocantes, in vincem in videntes, fratres, et si preoccupatus, Furi tomo in alico dilecto, vos qui spiritu hales estis, huius modi instruite in spiritu lenitatis, considerans te ipsum, ne et tutem teris. Alter alterius onera portate, et sic ad impleditis legem Christi, Nam si quis existimat se aliquid esse, cum vihil si ipse se he seduci. Opus autem suum provet unus quisque, et si in senet ipso tantum gloriam haberit, et non in altero. Unus quisque enim onus suum portabit, comunicet autem his, qui catechizator verbo ei, qui se catechizat in omnibus bodis. Noli te erare, Deus non iridetor, que enim senin averit homo, eic et metet. Honiant qui seninat in carne sua, de carne et metet corruptionem, Qui autem seminat in spiritu, de spiritu metet vihitam eternam. Monum autem facientes, non deficiamus, tempore enim suo metemus, non deficientes. Ergo dum tempus habemus, operemur bonum ad homes, maxime autem, ad domesticos fidei.
Dominus vohobis cum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Sequentia sancti evangelii secundum locam. In illo tempore, ibat Iesus in civitatem quoque vocator nahim, et ibant cum eo discipuli eus, et torba copiosa, cum autem apropinquaret porte civitatis, ecce defunctus e ferebator filius unicus matris sue, et hec vidua erat, et torba civitatis multa cum illa. Quam cum vidiset Dominus, misericordia motus super eiam, dixit illi, noli flere, et acesit, et tetigit loculum, i altem, qui portabant steterunt, et ahit, Adolescens, tibi digo sorge, et resedit qui erat mortus et cepit loqui, et tedit illum matri sue, ac cepit altem omnes timor, et magnificabant eum, dicentes, qui a profeta manius sorrexit in nobis, et qui a Deus visitavit plebem suam. Today is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost, and this Mass is being offered for the intentions of Patrick and Michaela Rooney. Our prayer for vocations, O oh God, we earnestly beseech Thee to bless the Church with many priests, brothers, and sisters who will love Thee with their whole strength, be faithful to their vocation, and gladly spend their entire lives to teach Thy truths, serve Thy Church, and to make Thee known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children. O oh Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, seminarians, and religious. Obtain for us many more. Amen. The prayer to Our Lady of Perpetual Help for her protection in this time of pandemic. O oh Mother of Perpetual Help, grant that I may ever invoke thy powerful name, which is the safeguard of the living and the salvation of the dying. O oh pure Virgin Mary, let your name be henceforth ever on my lips. Whenever I call upon you by name, hasten to help me. When I speak your sacred name or even think of you, what consolation and confidence, what sweetness and emotion fill my soul. I thank God for having given you so sweet, powerful, and lovely a name for my good. Let my love for you prompt me ever to greet you as mother of perpetual help. Maria Mater Ecclesiae et Domina Fatime. Before I forget, there is a change in the schedule this week. Uh, it's not in the bulletin. I forgot to tell Barbara ahead of time. But there will not be a Wednesday night mass this week. It'll be in the morning at 8 o'clock. So this Wednesday, 8 a.m., no 7.30 p.m. mass. We'll put it on the internet and Facebook. Uh, spread the word uh, to everyone that there will not be an evening mass. I've been invited to a meeting up in Middletown, New Jersey. Not Middletown. Yeah, Middletown, up along the coast near Rumson. Uh, for the Latin Mass uh, priests of Trenton and, Di and Camden uh, to plan something that's going on in the Trenton Diocese. Uh, so 
Uh, I'm glad to help them out. And the more we can spread this around, the better it is, and say a prayer for the success of this project that they want to get launched. Um, also, uh, the, uh, the next week on Saturday, Dr. Kwasniewski will be here. It's the first event of our 20th anniversary celebrations in this kind of a crazy time. And I know the tickets have been sold. I don't know what the, what the status is. Uh, but do, do, there will be an 8 o'clock high mast this coming Saturday at 8 o'clock. It'll be a beautiful mass. The, we're having a special choir come in to sing a Rheinberger mass uh, and chant, and other beautiful things will be sung. So that'll be Saturday morning. Uh, and then afterward, at the t conference at 10, and then we'll have question and answers. And there uh, may be something else that happens that day. But we'll let, let you know on the internet. Uh, but we look forward to starting that next week. 40 hours, uh, because of the pandemic, because we can't squeeze everybody in church for the final Mass like we like to do, uh, we're going to temporarily go back to the normal schedule for Sunday Masses. So the Sunday Mass schedule for, next, uh, for the first weekend of October will be Saturday night, 5 p.m. low Mass in the hall, 8 o'clock low Mass in the hall, and then the high Mass here in church. And um, the exposition adoration will continue on through those masses here in church. So actually, we're, it'll, it's a little more like it's meant to be, where the exposition altar continues for 40 hours and mass is set on another altar, on a side chapel or on a side altar. So uh, we'll have the uh, so we can have sign up times during those masses or right after masses or right before whatever. Um, which the sign-up sheet is on the internet. If you go to our website, if you go to the Facebook page, it's very easy to find. It's right there. You click on it, and it, you look for the times for sign-up. Remember, sign-up starts around 9 o'clock on Friday night and goes straight through to the 1030 Mass on Sunday. And we want to try to get four people for each a segment. I'm nervous about it because of this year, but I think we can do it. Our Lady always pulls through for us and gets enough people to do it, so we'll do it and uh, keep that in mind. Invite friends to come. Nobody else is having exposition or 40 hours. Uh, all these parishes around are like deserts. Uh, they barely have mass. They don't have confessions. A parish next door hasn't even opened up yet since June. They haven't opened up yet in this whole pandemic, which is a sad thing. So uh, again, we want to do, be cautious, we want to wear our mask, we want to socially distance as much as possible, uh, but we aren't going to be afraid because we put our trust in God and hope for the best, and Our Lady too, to protect us, all right? So um, that's that. CCD for second grade was this week. Next week will be the, uh, the confirmation class. The 40 hours choral masses, the stipend request for anybody who wants to have that mass sung in honor of someone, they are there. Uh, we will be kind of reducing the bulletin from all of these COVID restrictions. We still will have to have the masks, and we ask people to please clean up after this mask to wash the top of the pews and do the doorknob handles with the spray uh, and so forth uh, to keep everything clean. And w one last thing, uh, I think we're going to try it this week. We're going to start confessions back in the confessional during daily mass instead of outside. And it'll be in there. But we ask people to make sure you wear your mask and that you don't sit on that pew there right next to each other. So you have to stand six feet apart, uh, uh, down and around and out into the narthex for confessions. I don't know what we're going to do about mass, Sunday masses yet. We, we're, it's the weather, cold weather's coming, and it's not a, a very conducive atmosphere, especially when the cars are zooming by. So uh, we're, I'm going to talk about it with Father Hartman this week, we'll come up with a plan, and see what we can do. The biggest concern is not the confessional, because we have a mask on, you'll have a mask on, but it's the line of people waiting to get into confession, and people in pews and everything. How do you work that out? So we'll figure something out, and uh, we'll let you know more about it next week. But for now, next week's confessions will be the regular way outside on Saturday night, Sunday, uh, but weekday confessions will now start up in the confessional. Um, so that's how we're going to work it. So uh, keep posted, and we're going to change the times for confessions too, uh, for the especially Sunday morning mass from 7 to 9, 7 to 8, 
Nobody comes the whole first half hour. Uh, they start arriving around 7.30, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it one more week the way we've been doing it, but the hour will be 7.30 to 8 o'clock for confessions, or a little bit after 8 o'clock, so we can go past that. And then Saturday night will be from 4.20 to 5, 5, uh, 4, 4.50, 4.20 to 4.50, uh, because again, nobody comes that first 20 minutes uh, uh, before Mass, so that's how we're going to work it. But we'll have the regular schedule next week, and then after that we'll go back. We'll go to a shortened schedule uh, for Saturday night and uh, eight o'clock Sunday morning. I think that's it. Yes. Okay. A lesson from the epistle of Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Galatians. Brethren, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be made desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, and if a man be overtaken in any fault, you who are spiritual, instruct such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so you shall fulfill the law of Christ. For if any man think himself to be something, whereas he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every one prove his own work, and so he shall have glory in himself only, and not in another. For every one shall bear his own burden. And let him that is instructed in the word communicate to him that instructeth him in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what things a man shall sow, those also shall he reap. For he that soweth in his flesh, of the flesh also shall reap corruption. But he that soweth in the spirit, of the spirit shall reap life everlasting. And in doing good, let us not fail, for in due time we shall reap, not failing. Therefore, whilst we have time, let us work good to all men, but especially to those who are of the household of the faith. A continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. At that time, Jesus went into a city called Naim, and there went with him his disciples and a great multitude. And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a great multitude of the city was with her, whom when the Lord had seen, being moved with mercy towards her, he said to her, Weep not. And he came near and touched the bier, and they that carried it stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to thee, arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he gave him to his mother. And there came a fear on them all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet is risen up amongst us, and God hath visited his people. Thus far the words of the Holy Gospel, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Before we begin the sermon formally, did you notice anything special about the prayer that Father Paisley led us in, the daily prayer now to Our Lady of Perpetual Help, something special about that prayer to her this weekend, this weekend. If you recall, O Mother of Perpetual Help, may I invoke your powerful name, 
O Virgin Mary, let your name be on my lips. When I call you by name, when I speak your sacred name, I thank God for having given you so lovely and powerful a name. Something special, yes. Yesterday, the 12th, was, is every year, the feast day of the holy name of Mary. And so to pray this prayer this weekend is very striking that we have been calling upon her name, specifically in this beautiful prayer, all during the pandemic. The holy name of Mary, most powerful indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. St. Paul's words in the epistle today, and our Lord's words in the gospel, are calling out for each other. In other words, St. Paul says, quote, whilst we have time, whilst we have time, and our Lord Quote, young man, I say to thee, arise. Young man, I say to thee, arise. There is a connection between the words of St. Paul in the epistle and our Lord's words in the gospel. And if you were to put those two sentences into a, a mixer and mix them together, you would come out with something much, much better than cookie dough. Whilst we have time, young man, I say to thee, arise. What happens sometimes? People don't listen to St. Paul's admonition. They think they have all the time in the world. And then the person, the young man in the gospel, he dies without our Lord. But then our Lord comes he gives him a second chance. He brings him alive again and gives him his graces. Something very similar happened almost a thousand years ago to St. Malachi. St. Malachi was an archbishop who lived in Ireland in the 12th century. And here is what happened in his life, very similar to the gospel miracle today. One day, St. Malachi was called to the home of a prominent lady who was dangerously ill. He had planned to give her the sacrament of extreme unction, but her relatives and friends, like many misguided friends and relatives of our day, thought it would be better to postpone the sacrament of extreme unction until the next morning. Reluctantly, the holy bishop gave in to their wishes. He respected their wishes. Shortly after he returned to his residence, word came that the woman had passed away suddenly. The heart of St. Malachi was struck with remorse. Upon himself, he took all the blame for having allowed the woman to die without the last sacraments. Taking several priests with him, our saint went to the home to spend the night in weeping and praying. The Lord rewarded his devotion and perseverance. Like one awakening from sleep, a deep sleep, the dead woman returned to life. She raised up on her bed, recognized Saint Malachi, and greeted him with respect and joy. The saintly bishop thanked and blessed the Lord and at once anointed the woman come to life. The sick lady grew better, even recovered her health completely, no doubt to prove to everyone that a miracle had been performed. Some years later, she died a second time. Through his faithful and saintly servant, Malachi, God had worked a miracle in order to give that woman the benefit of the sacrament of extreme unction. The Lord had raised her from the dead, for that purpose. And here we are almost a thousand years later, things have not changed very much at all with regard to that admonition of St. Paul today. 
whilst you have time. So many think they have all the time in the world, and we know we don't. We have all the time in eternity, but not in this world. And so we have the scenario repeated. Two examples. If I had 10 minutes, I could give dozens of examples, but these two are recent, and so they come to mind immediately. Just like what happened to St. Malachi and to our Lord with that young man that died. The phone rings. Yes. And the person on the other end, a medical staff member, says, Father, we have a family here. They're asking for the last rites for their grandmother. Sure, no problem. But Father, they said to let you know that they're just giving you the heads up right now that they'll let you know when they want you to come. Excuse me? Well, they're not ready yet. They're not ready. I guess so. But I'm sure Grandma is ready. Uh, but Father, they, they really, okay, I bite my tongue on the phone, and gently I say to the, usually it's a nurse, look, tell them I will come, I respect their wishes, I will try to come when they call again and want me to come, because now is the time to receive the sacrament Call it extreme unction, the last rites, sacrament of the sick, anointing of the sick. It's all the same sacrament. The names are not as important as actually receiving it. A gift from God to give spiritual help to the person who receives the sacrament and also, it's amazing, consolation to the family when they see how relieved they are and the patient is after having received this beautiful sacrament. So, please be gentle with the family and tell them I will try to come when they want me. But you know what happens, my dear people? Invariably, Murphy's Law, it's a Sunday. You have that group of Catholics who they really only think about church and things of church on Sunday mornings. The rest of the week, they don't, doesn't hit them. So the call comes Sunday morning. Guess what? Unlike years ago when we had lots of priests, every priest is literally in church on Sunday mornings. You can't get a priest to go give the last rites on a Sunday morning. Whilst we have the time, says St. Paul. And the second example, this was about a year ago, got a similar call, went right away up there, and I'm outside the room ready to go in to anoint the person, and two of the family members come running out of the room when they caught sight of me in the hallway and pushed me back, physically pushed me back so that grandma wouldn't see me. I said, what's the matter? Did you call? for the sacrament. Is this room 302? Yes, 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 yes. But Father, she just woke up. Now would not be a good time. I had to bite my tongue. It's a wonder I have a whole tongue still in my mouth. <laughs> I said, look. And I went through the whole scenario with them very gently. No fear, it's never been a problem, ba 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 ba. Nope, bottom line, I have to respect their wishes. You see, they think if the person in the bed sees the priest coming, she'll think she's dying and get scared. This is still a problem. It's a very tiny number of people that think this way and act this way. Well, then why am I spending time on it? For this reason, it's a tiny number compared to most Catholics who get it. But the number is increasing. It's increasing. And that is very concerning. 
very concerning. Just like the number of people having their babies baptized going down, having their children come for the faith instruction going down, the number of couples getting married in the Catholic Church going down. Confessions, forget about it, that sacrament is almost dead, except in places like this, as you know, thank God, dead. The number of vocations in certain areas going up, but overall, down. The sacrament of the sick, extreme unction, is, it was the last holdout, but even that now, people are calling after the person is dead. They literally wait not to scare the person. The person dies, then they call the undertaker, then they call the priest. It's almost like the sacrament has become part of the funeral rituals. So we don't want that to happen. It won't happen with you or me. We are generous with the sacrament, with our loved ones. We don't wait to the last second or the last minute or the last hour or even the last day. We get St. Paul's admonition, but we who do understand, we have an obligation in whatever ways we can to help our relatives, neighbors, friends, coworkers to understand the importance of receiving this seventh sacrament earlier than later, sooner than later, for that grace and consolation as well. It is a spiritual gift. The gospel, we request it, yes. The epistle, sooner than later. Finally, the phone rang yesterday afternoon about a quarter after 12. A man is dying, 95 years old. I went up there. And as so often happens, the nurse, if she's around in the hallway, she'll whisper in my ear, Father, uh, this woman is a little bit feisty. So when you anoint her, she might be like, she might jump, she might scream out a bad word because she's not herself, you know. Gives me the heads up. Well, yesterday it was more typical Father, the man, he's 95, he is not responsive. Well, that's more often than not, that's fine. You don't have to be responsive uh, to receive the sacrament of extreme unction, no problem. Fine, I go in, two relatives were there, and the nurse actually came in to the room also and participated in listening to uh, the prayers of the anointing. The man, obviously, as I said the prayers, and anointed him, not one wrinkle of the forehead, not one quiver of the lip, the eyes didn't move one fraction, the breathing stayed very low and didn't change at all. He truly was almost, you would think, visually unconscious, but heavily sedated, whatever. What I do is, it's not part of the actual formal rite of the sacrament, but after the sacrament, before I leave, I pray a Hail Mary with the people in the room as a prayer of thanksgiving to the Lord for the graces of the sacrament. It's a wonderful way to end with a Hail Mary. We're all looking at the man intently as we're saying the prayers, just maybe he would hear something as a bonus. As soon as we started the Hail Mary, his mouth started moving. He was mouthing the words of the Hail Mary. He couldn't utter one syllable verbally, audibly. He was so weak. But you could see he was coming alive from that deep trance that he was in, and he was mouthing the Hail Mary. It was so comforting to the family that he was getting this and be aware that people were praying for him, that it gave him that comfort, that he, you would never think he'd be able to do that. The nurse started to fill up with tears. The other two were crying, but they were not tears of sadness. Well, we're all sad when we lose a loved one. They were really tears of joy that God gave a grace for him to not just hear 
but to actually try to say the words of the Hail Mary. Very moving. Then as we're leaving the room, the nurse and I, I said, you know what? You might not know this, I said to her, but today is the feast day in the Catholic calendar of the holy name of Mary. And when this man heard her name, boy, it was a real reminder how powerful the name of Mary really is. Just want to say one word, not to follow up Father's sermon was beautiful. Uh, the word last rites, uh, we've talked about this. Even here, I've gone to anoint someone and they said, they were pretty sick, I, I don't want the last rites yet. That's, uh, that term is basically means it's the last time you receive the sacrament of extreme unction. The extreme unction is the same every single time, except when you receive it the last time, it's called the last rites. So prayers are all about healing, healing and being restored to your place. Uh, and may God help you and protect you. So it's nothing to ever be fearful of. And we've got to try to get that out of people's minds. It's just a terrible thing that they wait until and deny it so long. Thank you.
Dominus Fobiscum. Et cum spiritus tuo. Orremus. Expectans, expectabi Dominum, et respectsit mea, et exaudibi deprecationem mea, et inisit in os meam canticum novum.
Peronia secula secula horum. Dominus forbiscum. Suor sum corda. Si ha ha sagamus domino deo nostro. Verhe dinum et justum est e cum et salutare. Nos tibi semper et ubique gratia sagere. Domine Sante Pater Omnipotens Eterne Deus, qui cum unicenito Filio Tuo et Spiritus Sancto Unus es Deus, Unus es Dominus, non in unius singularitate persone, sed in unius Trinitate Sustantiae, O denim de tua gloria, revelante te he credimus, hoc de filio tuho, hoc de spiritu santo, sine diferencia discretio honi sentimus. Ut in confessione veri sempiterne que de hitatis, et in personis proprietas, et in essentia unitas, et in maestate adore hitore qualitas. Quam laudant angeli atque ahark angeli, cherubim coque ahark seraphim, qui non cessat pamari cotidie una voce dicentes. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deo Sabaon, Genis on Celi et Terra Gloria Tua, Zone in Excelsis,
Vi skoko je pekatori bosa. Peromia secula seculorum. Oremus, precepti salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audeimus dicere, Pater noster qui es in celis, Sanctificetor nomen tuum, adveniat regnum tuum, fiat voluntas tua, sicut in celo et in terra, panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et imite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos inducas in tentationem. Semiramosa. Semiramosa. 
is supposed to be to his page with Paul about the way I'm very happy with some of these that are probably to his part in the name of Snow Stays. Good copy of the record here to a UT edificato. Simo sempre liberi at home deeper departure in the court. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax Domini sit semper vobiscum. Domine non sentigius. Domine non sentigius. Miseriatur vestri omnipotens Deus, et demisis peccatis vestris, perducat vos, ad vitam eternam. Amen. Indulgentiam absolutionem et remissionem peccatorum nostrorum, triboat nobis omnipotens, et misericoris dominus. Ecce anus Dei, ecce qui toli peccata mundi. Domine nos sanctius, et ius, et ius,
money squim. Nostras et corpora possidiat, quesumus domine, doni celestis operatio, ut non noster sensus in nobis, sed iugi tereus preveni hat effectus, per dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, we take and vive et reignat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Nos quesumus domine, divini sacramenti munus oblatum, et intercedente beata Virgine Dei, genetrice Maria, cum beato Iosef, beatis apostolis tuis petuet Paolo, atque beato Roberto, et omnibus sanctis, a cumtis nos, redat et perversitatibus expiatos, et adversitatibus expiatos, per iundum dominum nostrum Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vive et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus Covisum, Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus, Dominus Hobisco, Inizio Sancti Evangelii secundum Ioane, in principio era verbo, met verbo, met verbo, met verbo, met verbo, met verbo, met verbo,
divine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. O praise and all thanks to thee, the O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine. O praise and all thanks to thee, the For Jesus Sacratissimo, miserere nobis. For Jesus Sacratissimo, Blessed be God. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. 
Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the name of Mary. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God and his angels and his saints. May the heart of Jesus, in the most blessed sacrament, be praised to the Lord of love, with great affection, at every moment, in all the tabernacles of the world, even until the end of time. Good Lord. 